So the main learning objectives associated with this LightBoard video is to be able to identify the lymph nodes associated with the pelvis, as well as be able to explain the efferent drainage of major pelvic viscera and its relations. So it's important to remember that the location of lymph nodes, as well as the subsequent drainage, is really going to follow the course of the major vasculature. So the diagram beside represents the major veins stemming from the proximal femur, so we have our femoral vein through to our common iliacs, which are then going to confluence to form the inferior vena cava. So ultimately, all of the lymph from the lower limb and the pelvic cavity is going to drain back into this dilated sac or enlargement, which is going to be located on the anterior vertebral bodies of lumbar vertebrae one and two, which is called the cisterna chile. So the significance of the cisterna chile is it is actually receiving its contributions or tributaries by two main trunks, namely the interstitial trunk as well as the lumbar trunk. The lumbar trunk is formed by a group of lymph nodes which is called the lateral or also called the paraaortic lymph nodes and these are going to be located to the lateral aspects of the blood vessels. So more specifically, the lumbar trunk is going to be draining the lower limb, the walls and the viscera of the pelvis, the kidneys and the suprarenal glands, gonads, so the testes and the ovaries, as well as the deep lymphatic vessels associated with the abdomen. Coursing then from distal through to proximal, we firstly have our inguinal group of lymph nodes. So the inguinal group, as the name sort of implies, is going to be in the groin region. This can then be subdivided into two main groups, so the superficial and the deep inguinal group. Starting with the superficial group, we have around eight to 10 major lymph nodes, and these are going to be arranged in two different patterns and locations. So the first, we have what's called the upper or also the horizontal superficial group. And this is going to be located just inferior to the inguinal ligament, arranged in a chain-like manner. And then following this, we also have what's called the vertical or the lower subgroup. And the vertical subgroup is going to be located at the termination of the great saphenous vein at the femoral triangle. So collectively then, when we're talking about the superficial inguinal group, with respect then to the horizontal subgroup, the lymph nodes located on the lateral aspect are going to be draining the gluteal region as well as the adjoining part of the abdominal wall just inferior to the umbilicus. In contrast, the medial lymph nodes are going to then receive afferent drainage from the superficial vessels of the external genitalia, including the vagina just inferior to the hymen, as well as the lower anal canal and perianal region, as well as the uterine lymph vessels that are located in relation to the round ligament of the uterus. In contrast then, the lower or the vertical subgroup will receive drainage from the superficial vessels associated with the lower limb, with the exception of the posterior and the lateral lower leg or calf. With respect then to the efferent drainage of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, these will then drain into the external iliac nodes, which are then going to be located on and adjacent to the external iliac blood vessels. The deep inguinal lymph nodes are then going to be located deep to the inguinal ligament, specifically coursing medial to the femoral vein.
the deep inguinal lymph nodes will receive efferent drainage from the, the deep lymphatic vessels associated or coursing with the femoral vessels, as well as the glands penis and clitoris, along with some contribution from a few efferents of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Similarly then, the deep inguinal nodes are going to drain back into the external iliac nodes. Coursing proximally then, we know that as soon as we have passed the level of the inguinal canal or ligament, the femoral vein is going to continue as the external iliac vein. We also have a tributary which is going to then contribute to the formation of the common iliac vein, which is going to be your internal iliac. So as you guessed, located on the internal iliac vein and vessels, we see the internal iliac lymph nodes. The internal lymph nodes will receive lymph from all of the pelvic viscera, as well as the deep parts of the perineum, as well as muscles associated with the gluteal region and the thigh. Both our internal and external iliac lymph nodes are then going to drain back into the common iliac lymph nodes. So tracking back then to the external iliac lymph nodes, so specifically these will, will be receiving lymph from the inguinal lymph nodes, so both superficial and deep subgroups, as well as the deep infra-umbilical abdominal wall, the adductor region of the thigh, as well as some of the pelvic viscera. So more specifically, the glands penis and clitoris, the membranous urethra, the prostate, the fundus of the bladder, as well as the cervix, uteri, and parts of the vagina. The final contribution then to the common iliac lymph nodes is going to be a couple of tiny lymph nodes located just anterior to the sacrum, which, as you would guess, are called the sacral nodes. So the sacral lymph nodes specifically are going to receive efferent lymphatic drainage from the postero-inferior pelvic viscera, as well as the prostatic vessels, the uterus, vagina, and posterior perineum. All three sacral, internal and external iliac are then going to drain into the common iliac lymph nodes. Following from this, lymph from the common iliac nodes are then going to drain directly into the paraaortic lymph nodes. And the paraaortic lymph nodes are also going to receive lymphatic contribution from the kidneys and the suprarenal glands. And what is of important clinical significance is lymphatic drainage associated with the gonads, the testes and the ovaries, will be draining directly into the paraaortic lymph nodes. And finally, as well as contributions from the posterior abdominal wall. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, Lymph from the paraortic lymph nodes will then form the lumbar trunk. While we're at this space, although this will be discussed in subsequent videos and when we're discussing the content and lymphatic drainage associated with the GIT, be aware that just medial to the paraortic lymph nodes, we have another major lymph group or a series of major lymph groups which are going to help to form the interstitial trunk, which are going to be your pre-aortic nodes. The reason why I'm bringing this up is the pre-aortic lymph nodes consist of three main groups. Starting from most superiorly, we have the celiac lymph nodes, superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric, which again mirror the blood supply and drainage associated with the gut. But what is of significance is the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes are going to receive efferent contributions from the pararectal nodes, which are going to drain or be an intermediate group associated with the rectum and the anal canal. Thank you very much for your attention and if you'd like to see similar Lightboard videos, please make sure that you stay tuned to our YouTube channel.